thank you very much, Rose, for inviting me to be here this afternoon to speak to your group. And it's nice, I haven't got around to meeting basically anybody here other than a couple of you, so I do look forward to doing that for the rest of the day also. Trust, big word in business today. And the reason it's become such a, a big word and has so much more meaning is because of the internet. So life has changed for business people. So if you've been in business a long time, like I have, um, you will find that we do business very differently today. If you're new and you're young, it's your advantage because you don't know the old way in, and so you, you learn early. You have to build on trust. If you're going to build a, a business today, it's really, really important that you set yourself up there with the, the values, that you understand your own value system and the values that are important to you as a person. Those values that are important to you as a person are the values you're going to create your business on. That's who you'll become known as. It'll be a result of the way you behave as to what pe how people will see you and perceive you and perceive your business. Business today is different because in years gone by, there was the person who did the business and there was someone who lived at home. Today it's very different because we have to be who we are and have to be seen to be the same person. For me, it's what you see is what you get. I don't play around about being on me, who I am. I've been around a long time, I suppose. But today, you can't have a different face at home to what you have in business because the internet has changed that. Social media has changed that. I can find out anything I want to know about any of you. And I can find out some of your deepest, darkest secrets within a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. Now that's scary. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really aware of how you are building your business and who you're being seen as. Because if you don't do that, you're going to find that things will backfire on you. There will be a lot of slides with a lot of things, you, a lot of pictures on. And the reason I do that is because I'm very aware of people have a lot of different um, personality styles. I am not auditory at all. I'm very kinesthetic visual, so I need to see things. Being auditory, there's only about 25% of our population are auditory. So what about the rest of them? Which are probably a lot of people in this room. And the reason being is because that's who entrepreneurs are. People who are academics and who are locked in academia are usually very auditory. So it's very important when you're in business that you understand your clients and you understand how they perceive information. Because if you can talk to them from where they come from, it's going to make an enormous difference because you're going to be hearing them. We'll go more that later. Trust takes a long time to build. It's not something that happens overnight. So I find with a lot of people in business, they start their business and they think they meant to have a business within six months or they meant to be earning all this money. When I started in business, we were told it was be prepared five, maybe ten years before you're making the money you want. It takes a long time to get where you want to go in business. It doesn't happen overnight. And unfortunately, most people starting out in business want their income by the first end of the week or second week or third week or fourth week. It isn't going to happen. And the amount of clients that say to me, if only I'd listened to you in the beginning, and it's usually after the vegan mastermind in six months, they say, every word you said was right. I say, of course, I've been around a long time. So it's really important you understand if you're in business, you love what you do, just keep doing it. Because it will pay off as long as you keep, you keep going. But don't expect miracles overnight. And it's very easy also to lose your reputation very, very fast. Because people talk. Everyone in here in social media? Yeah. Doing a lot of social media? Anyone not doing a lot of social media? <laughs> you better start. <laughs> Really important. Social media is the greatest tool in business today. When I started in business, there was no photocopiers, no such thing as photocopier. We used gastetners. Um, there were no computers, of course. There was no phones. Life was different. 
We learned the hard way. You're very lucky in business today, and I think to be in business today is the greatest gift because we can. We've got everything handed to us. We've just got to learn how to make it work. And now there's such a thing as joint venturing, and there's such a thing as outsourcing and other things that we can get other people to do the things that we don't like doing. And we find out all Peter, and we find out accountant. Because for me personally, that's my least strength of everything I have. If I didn't have a bookkeeper and I didn't have an accountant, I'd probably be a little bit. Because they saved my life. So know your own strengths. Don't bother doing the things you're not good at. Find someone else to do it. Can I ask you very quickly, and I am very happy for people to ask me questions any time as we go along. Um, I don't mind being interrupted because when I give a speak, I might give this talk a few times to NRG. It'll never be the same, it'll be different every single time. I don't prepare a speech. I create this, and what comes out is dependent on where you people are at as to what comes out. Is there anything particular you're wanting to know about today? The subject. Okay, that's all right. We're going to, I hope we're going to cover it totally anyway. So we're going to get there. So as I said, if you have a question, then please ask me. I was like, oh, sure. Oh, sorry. I'll be allowed. Um, but I don't want to be rude. But um, I think the main thing I want to know is how do you, be, how do you build that trust on social media? It's very easy. And that's without, another subject. But I would it's very hard to be honest without, you know what I mean? Like that trust, honesty, authentic. Got to, you've got to be authentic. You've got to be real. Yeah. Buy my book later and you will. I have to buy your book. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it is, it is not hard to do, mm -hmm. if you're honest. I'm sure everyone in this room believes they're honest, mm -hmm. reliable, authentic people. I'm sure Rose wouldn't have you in this group or have you here if after having a coffee meeting with you, she didn't decide that she wanted you in her group. You're very lucky. Other people don't go through people the way Rose does, so you're very lucky to be in NIG. Yeah, with that one, we'll, I'll go into that as we go, so social media. Because social media is the best friend you've got if you want to be able to build a relationship and build trust in the marketplace. For me, I have 37, 38 now, um, social media sites. And they are access day. You can do it. Uh, social media. <laughs> okay, you all know who that man is, no doubt, if you're in business. Anyone not know who it is? Richard Branson? Okay. An entrepreneur is an innovator, a job creator, a game changer, a business leader, a disruptor, and an adventurer. If you're not one of those, or if you're not all of those, you're not an entrepreneur. If you're going to be in business, you have to be an entrepreneur. You have to think like an entrepreneur. In business today, you have to be able to be who you are, be out there, and be a game changer. And you have to learn leadership skills and become a leader. Because if you're not going to be a leader, and that's how you'll get your trust in the, out there, will be by being a leader. So you have to be the best in your field that you can be, and you have to be better than anyone else, and you have to know you're better than anyone else. Because if you don't believe you're better than anyone else, do something about it. Or get out of the industry. Because you won't make it out there. You get used to me, I say it as it is. Trust in business. Accountability. Anyone who's around me knows I talk about accountability all the time. Um, I'm probably, I'm, to, the, to the extent I can be really judgmental on it. Not good to be judgmental, but accountability as a business owner, accountability as a person is the most important thing you have. You will be, you will be noticed on whether you, you are trustworthy in a marketplace by your accountability, by your customer service, by your reliability, your responsibility, your honesty and your care. That's the care of your clients, the care of your fellow members, the care of other people around you. This is your family. So you treat it like your family. You build a trust within your family. And you've got all these other people who are in different industries to you who can go out there and talk about you. And that's where social media is your wonderful friend. Because if you want to develop out there into the marketplace to be someone, it's really important that you talk about everybody else. 
So every day of the week, you could be talking about two different people. What they do, why you like them. Me personally, if, if I was in a group and I started back in the late 80s in groups similar to this, when Leeds Club was the only one out there in those days. Uh, but I wouldn't do business with anybody, I wouldn't promote anyone or talk about anyone until I'd done business with them or spend a bit of time if they did something I didn't, I didn't need. So you, that is how you're authentic. If you're going to talk about someone out there, you must know them. When you put your name to somebody else, that is going to make you trustworthy or not trustworthy depending on the experience someone has with the person you put out there. So this is really, really important. You want to have trust out there in building your relationships, you have to be trustworthy. So if you say someone is good, they've got to be good. If you say someone, when you don't say someone isn't good, you learn ways of getting around it. Because if you bag someone in the marketplace, you can have a problem. You can do it to your best friend and tell them, but you've got to be careful when you say things. But those um, six words are really, really important. So you're probably wondering who I am. I've been out there a long time. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother. I love to write, I write every day. Writing is really important to me. I'm a coach, I'm an educator, I'm a speaker, I'm a mentor. Um, I train, I'm a trainer. I run mastermind groups from personal development through to strategy and accountability groups. Um, I just love supporting people grow because I find there's a lot of people out there that find that they don't understand that if they help someone else, they're not taking anything away from themselves. Somebody said to me at lunch today in a group that I'm in, because after 50 years I went back to study. Now I haven't been to school for over 50 years, so I'm getting on a bit. And I'll tell you, it's been really interesting seeing, being in a classroom study situation. But I have learned, and I have people say to me, and someone said at lunchtime today, you know, I go there and I give and give and give and you don't even get anything back. How many of you say that? I take, I take, I take. I never give anything back. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, if you give with an expectation, you're never going to get anything back. Giving is you give freely. You give to all your members without expectation of anything in return. And if you don't expect it, you're going to get it. But if you're waiting for something to come back to you, Whatever will make sure it doesn't. Don't expect something to come back from where you gave it anyway. Because giving is you give because you care. You give because you want to support. You want to help. You want to make a difference. And this comes back to understanding and knowing your purpose, your vision, your vision for your business, your vision for your life, and your purpose. Because if you understand that and know it, it will change your business. Maybe one day Shelley can talk about vision and purpose. I started business firstly, I've been in business with my ex-husband for years, um, but I started my first business in 1989. It was called My Connections, and that's probably what really put me on the road to where I am today. And it was because I learned um, that I had a personal development natural therapy centre, and a lot of people had no idea what they were doing. They didn't have to promote, so I learned how to become a marketer before there was such a thing as marketing. And so I was a marketer for 20 years and promoter, bringing people in from overseas um, and touring people. Personal development and business development were always important, so I rounded everything together because I believe you can't have one without the other. If you're in business, you have to be personally developed. If you're not, you're letting yourself down. So um, I've they can tell you a little bit about me there. I'm just passionate about changing your life if I can. And I want to chat to you later if I can, please. Cool. Um, number one asset is building relationships. It's the skills, understanding word of mouth marketing. We go into a coffee shop, we walk out, we tell people about a great coffee shop, we tell them about a great meal we've had. We've seen a great movie. That's word of mouth marketing. That's networking. That's relationship building. But we don't ever ask for anything in return from that. 
So why do we ask for something in return when we, when we give business to someone? Same thing. If you like something, you talk about it. In fact, it's your duty to talk about what you like. It's your duty to people you know to support them to grow. So it's totally up to you how you go about it. Business skills, it's about connecting people, having a common core, having a goal, common goal. It's about supporting people to achieve their goals, because you all no doubt got goals. Find out what each other's goals are so you can support them. Um, it's getting your support groups, getting being with like-minded people. It's also about developing community, developing your tribe, developing your network, not only within here but within your business. My slides are available for you all later if you'd like them. All you've got to do is ask me. So how to network. Who here finds it hard to network? Just three? All right, no. Four, we do. Who finds it hard to walk into a room of people that they've never seen before? <laughs> Depending on personality style, anybody can learn networking skills. It's really, really easy. I've been teaching it for over 25 years. It's really easy. It doesn't matter who you are. But depending on your personality style, you will do it differently. So if you're an introvert, it's so much harder for you. You come in and you sit here and you, I observe, so I watch what people are, what they're like, so I can see. Now, Jason, sorry, Jason, we don't want that, right? For Jason, it's that much harder. There are thousands, millions of Jasons out there, and there's probably a few other here that are a, a little introverted, but he's probably the most introverted in the room. It is your responsibility to look after people like Jason. I'm not picking you out because it's really important. For people who are introverted, it's that much harder to walk into a room. You'll always pick them in a room. So your job, if you're an extrovert, is to look after people who are like that. Because they'll become your best friend. They'll probably become your best referrer as well. So if for the bulk of you who are extroverted and find it easy to go out there and meet people and do it, watch and observe people who aren't and support and help them. That's being a good networker. That's how you build your trust. That's how you build the likability of you. By supporting and helping other people. Taking the focus off you, you're not important. That person, for me, you're important. It's got nothing to do with me. It's about who you are. And for me, when I go anywhere, it's about who are you? How can I help you? Who do you need? Who do you need in your network? Who have I got in my network who may be able to help and support you? That's how you should be thinking when you're networking. If you start taking focus off self, you will find that things will change in your business. When should you build relationships? Every day, 24 hours a day. I will not walk outside my door without a business card. Here to the end of the street. Take the keys, why not have some business cards with me? Because I don't know who I'm going to meet within 10 feet of my home who may just need something or someone that I know that I can help them with. I'm not there to help them for me because of, that's not what's important. What's important is how you help other people to get achieve what they want to achieve. If you can help them achieve everything they want, they'll help you. Because when somebody helps you, do you, do you remember them? So take focus off self and put it on to others. You've got to know your niche. You, you've got to know the community from a business perspective you need to work in. It's really, really important. So follow your own, follow where you are. Is there anyone here who doesn't know their niche? No. Will do? Oh, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> who here doesn't think they're a good listener? All good listeners? Right. Who here doesn't network 
24 hours a day, waking hours, or whatever hours in the day you're away. You don't, you don't, you don't. See, even if you're not out there meeting people, there's social media. And you can touch thousands. Well, I became a bit disillusioned, say, with LinkedIn, for example. Because I've got all these hundreds of people that say, I'm good at this and that, and I'm not. I've never done these things. They don't even know me. So therefore, I have a bit of a loss of faith in forming relationships through LinkedIn. Okay. And this is why I'm a Facebook girl, not a LinkedIn girl, even though, yes, I do LinkedIn. I like Facebook because you get to know who people are, you get to see them, you see the people, things people write, you get to see how they respond, you get to learn what they like and what they don't like. Uh, it's a totally different thing. And business, the Fortune 500 companies are all on Facebook, observing, watching, doing sites. They wouldn't be doing that if they weren't getting business. So if you find that hard, go to where it's easier for you. But I've never talked about it. Really important you don't over promote yourself. I very rarely say what I do. Very rarely tell people what I do. I let them find out. I make a big enough noise out there. People see me. If they want to find me, they just got to write, I put my name in Google. And I think I come up about the first seven pages. Mm -hmm. That's your job to make sure you come up in the first seven pages. And that will happen only by what you do out there and what you put out there and your product and your content. Because you have to be seen out there, it's a big world. You've got to be better than everybody else, and you've got to know you're better than everybody else. Whether you are or not, it's just got to be in your mind that you are. I'm not talking about ego here. I'm talking about you knowing in your heart that what you do is the best you can do, and you do it well, and you're honest, and you're real. Find your common ground with people. And that's knowing your niche market, finding like-minded people, business interests, hobby groups, networking groups. Know your demographic. Are you male, female, both? What age group? Um, what industry? What hobbies? What you've got to know your demographic for your for what it is you are doing. Everything I do today came from hobby because I love doing it. They're all hobbies, expert and businesses. You can build a relationship anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. You are more fortunate than most because you're in a group where you get an opportunity to meet people and be introduced to a lot of other people. And that's your job in your coffee meeting is to get to know and understand each other, but also to get to know and understand who each other needs. Because your job is to find out how do I help you become who you want to become? Who in my contact list have I got that can support you? Opening up your contacts. But you don't open up your contacts to someone unless you know you can trust them. And that they won't spam you people. Because that's important too. So you've got to use some common sense, which isn't very common today. There's a lot of fake people on um, social media, like you know how you can accept them, and then they end up being, um, you know, just fake profiles. And just slap you with uh, You have to learn, you have to learn. This, that's, that's a big subject all in yeah. itself. Um, I would probably delete 15, 20 a day on people wanting to join. Do you do a following? Do I do it? A following when you don't have them? No, I don't okay. have to follow some of them. I don't have time to follow some of them. No, no, it's called a following where you don't have them and they become followers. No. They want to become followers, they become followers. I added someone that I, I joined with somebody and I didn't, she didn't feel right to me in America. Yeah. We had a conversation, I kept thinking, it's not adding up, she doesn't. She's not American. I've lived over there. Her uh, conversation was wrong. She kept wanting to call me ma'am all the time. Um, she is a real woman, actually, and she is a woman, and she does live in America. Um, and I got rid of her some time ago, but anyway, I let her in this week. She's so grateful, because she's been following me. She's on my things. I've seen her every day. So it's been really interesting. I've now let her in, and she's very grateful. Um, but yeah, you've got to know you're letting You don't let someone pull them out. I just sometimes let someone in. And don't look at their profile, see something, and unfriend them straight away. Mm -hmm. I've done the same. You've got to be aware if you put around you. Any chicks from there? Me on Instagram? Check out my profile. Okay. <laughs> uh, benefits of 
building trust. As I said, you can have all these all this information is there for you because I'm going to be getting all this stuff. Um, get talking. Building trust is the, probably the most important thing in a business that you do. It's the most important thing in life that you do. Everybody wants to be liked, but you've got to be likable. You've got to do the things that people like. So you put the right marketplace around you, the people who will like you. To me, it's common sense. Building trust is, if, are you trustworthy? Do you trust yourself? You need to ask yourself that. Are you trustworthy? You know there are people who can't say yes. It's interesting. But there's a lot of benefits of building trust. This is what will take you where you want to go. Goal setting, most important thing. And the one thing I learned from Jim Rowan, I worked with Jim Rowan for four years, back in the 90s. And Go, I learn goal setting from people. Um, I teach goal setting. I run one day, full day workshops. I'm teaching people how to goal set. How to plan and how to vision board. Because it's really, really important. If you don't have a goal, if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. And it's always got to be, you've got to be moving those goal posts all the time. As you're getting close to it, you're making a bigger one. Because if you don't do that, you're going to find that well, you'll shrivel up and die. They found that out many years ago with men when they retired at 55, that they used to die within five years because they had no, nothing, there was no future to look forward to. So you must have goals. You've got to become a leader, a giver. You've got to be appreciative and grateful. We are so blessed to live in this country. Um, you've got to become a good listener. An active listener. You've got to become responsible and reliable. You've got to be honest and trustworthy. And you've got to believe you're those things. But you also must have integrity. You've got to know your purpose. As individuals, we all have a purpose. You've got to show your commitment to the people around you, as you do by being in a group like this. And you've got to love your people. You've got to love your people. There's only two emotions in life, love and fear. Where do you live? Where do you sit? You need to look at that too for all of you. It's really important. The most important things in business that you need to have and to look the part. The one thing I've done, that your database or CRM and your business cards to me are the most important thing in your business, other than you and what you have. So I've actually put out some, I've got a giveaway for you there four pages um, for you to have a look at uh, and it's all about business cards. So I believe business cards are, the, are just so, so important and what you do with it. So there's four pages of seven important things for good business cards. And I'm happy to look at anyone's business card and critique it if you like. Uh, your spiel, becoming a speaker, becoming the expert, having your website, your social media, um, keeping and using existing connections you've already got, your reputation management is really, really important. Um, and you follow up and show them appreciation. Networking, three important things. What you do prior to a meeting, what you do at a meeting, and what you do after a meeting. And if you don't do the right things in there, um, prior, know why you're going and have an expectation and a goal. During the meeting, do those goals, whatever they are, achieve that goal you set. This is that when you're networking, doing anything, and after the meeting, follow up. 99% of people do no follow up. It floors me. Know who, who your network is, who are around you, what's their reputation, are they givers, are they of good character? Because whoever's around you are who you are. The five people who are closest to you are who you are. So think about the five closest people you have who are around you. And I'm not talking your kids and your spouse and that and your partner. But other than that, who are the five people around you? That's where your worth is. If you don't like where you're at, have a look at who's there. 
Um, do the people around you recommend you? Are they honest with you? Honesty is really important that you've got people who will say to you, that is crap. Or don't do that. You accept it. Because if you, if they're a good enough friend, they'll tell you. Um, do they support you and are they encouraging you? And just understanding that your reputation is what will precede you when you go anywhere. And if it's not good, it's not going to be easy going wherever you're going to go. Understand your purpose, it must be written, written. I'm talking life purpose. What's your legacy? Why are you here? What's your vision and mission? Do you know it? Do people in your business who are around you know it? No people follow you if they don't know your vision or they're not going to stay around if you employ people. Do you have goals for the year set? Do you know what you need yourself? Do you understand the challenges that are going to be with you to get those things that you need to do? Because there's always challenges. So you've got to know what they are. Do you have a mentor or a coach or someone around you who can help you? And do you have um, know your talents and your gifts? All simple questions. Really important questions. How do you show your authenticity? It's walking your talk. It's being who you are. It's being having emotional intelligence. It's using whole brain thinking. Really, really important. But for you, uh, you know how you show your, your authenticity. Because that's what you'll be marked on in the marketplace. Um, relationship building is all about you. Go through this later. Kick me out. What? Two minutes. Um, Words of importance, trust, integrity, gratitude, and thank you. And not enough people say thank you, unfortunately. Um, you're welcome to my slides, as I said this, and you're welcome to use any of the pictures, because I've got them all of them anyway. Um, the things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. And that was one of Jim Rowan's favorite quotes um, that he used to use all the time. And it's quite true. Where you are is where you are. You've created where you are now. If you don't like it, change it. If you like it, embrace it and be better. So be true to yourself, know yourself, grow yourself, understand who you are and what your beliefs are, your values, know who you want to be, know what you want to be, be consistent, be congruent, have integrity and honour and discipline, which is really important, and gratitude. Be accountable and be trustworthy. So in closing, don't wish the world was easier. As Jim Rohn would say, wish you were better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.